In a splendid tutorial, I will show you how to create a simple animated Newton's Cradle. Other tutorials can be found in my playlists. Okay. Hit one on your numbers pad to go into front view and roll your middle mouse if you want to zoom in a bit. Now I'm going to extend this cube along the X axis. So to do this just press S followed by X and then type 1.5 Then left click to accept. So we've extended this cube or I made it into a sort of a rectangle. Now press tab on your keyboard to go into edit mode then Z to bring up your view options and select wireframe. Come up to the top of the screen and select the edge select button. With your pointer just above the bottom edge hold down your left mouse button and draw a box over the bottom edge. The reason we've gone into wireframe if you're new to uh, Blender is if I'd have done that in solid view it would have just selected this edge here whereas as you can see is selected both the edges and just press 5 on my number pad to go into um, orthographic view ok now hit delete and make sure you select only edges and faces press 3 on your numbers pad and this time do a box select through the middle hit delete again and select only edges and faces. Press 1 on your numbers pad and then hit tab to go into object uh, mode. Now this is quite important because this won't work unless you hold down control followed by A and select all transforms. Now if you come to the right of the screen look for the little wrench and this will say properties modifier modifier properties and select this select add modifier then select bevel what you want to do is select vertices and this will angle the corners now I'm not going to change anything here but what I will do is to the right of the number one there's a little arrow so just left click this a few times I'm going to take this up to about six you can take it up to eight if you want but six is probably good enough and if you know that's it so look for the little drop down arrow select this and then select apply now come up to object top left select this and next to convert to select curve select the curve It'll actually say object data properties and then open up the box, um, the geometry box, by selecting the little arrow next to geometry. Make sure that round is selected. And then in depth, the right hand arrow, left click this a few times. So I'm going to take this up to three, I think. And the resolution, I'm going to take this up to, I don't know, probably six would be enough for this. And if you want to be really uh, fussy, you can fill the end by selecting fill caps. Now if you come up to object again, then convert and then select mesh. Now if you press Z and go into solid view, you should have something. I'm just going to hold my middle mouse button down and drag this view around. You should have something that looks like this. And one to go back into front view. With this selected, just right click and left click shade smooth. Hold down shift followed by A. And next to mesh, select cube. Press S, Z, point one. And S, X, one point six press three on your numbers pad and then press s y one point one left
left click again when to go back into um, front view one on your numbers pad and I'm just going to use this move button here and using the blue arrow I'm going to just drag this all the way down so it's in line with the bottom of the sort of frame that we've just made you can roll your middle mouse and using shift in your middle mouse you can change your view so I'm not going to be too fussy that will do okay press tab to go back into edit mode then Z and select wireframe you can um, also go in back into a uh, vertex select up here now again draw a box using your left mouse button over the top of the um, modified cube and you should have the um, object data property button still selected but this time it'll look like a little triangle vertex groups select the plus sign and then select assign press tab on your keyboard to go back into object mode go back to the little wrench and add modifier select no actually you need to do a change there so I forgot that we'll have to go back you'll need to press and apply again so you'll need to press control a all transforms otherwise this won't work and now select add modifier select bevel and in the angle where it says angle left click and select vertex group and in the box next to vertex group select group reduce this down this amount of 0.1 by left clicking on the left hand arrow to about 0 0.05 and then increase the sort of number of segments to at least six come to the top and select the little arrow and then apply and again if you press Z and go into solid view and then right click and press smooth you should have something that looks a bit like this by the way I am winging this <laughs> I've not actually practiced this at all so hopefully this will go without too many hitches okay hold down shift followed by A and next to mesh select UV sphere resize this by pressing S.25 and then using the blue arrow again drag this down so it's just above the base again you can roll your middle mouse and sort of have a good look make sure it's just above give it a bit of a gap that'll do press 7 on your numbers pad to go into top view and then tab to go into edit mode roll your middle mouse to get a good view on the the actual sphere so I'm going to take it right in and then I use shift and my middle mouse button to sort of center up so we got a vertex in the middle then we got one two so left click on this vertex here and coming down again from the middle one two hold down shift and select this one and then the next bit is quite important you need to hold down shift followed by D and then hit return and this will have actually created duplicates of these two vertices now press 1 on your numbers pad roll your middle mouse and then use shift in your middle mouse to reposition if you want so get a reasonably good view of um, this bar up here and if you want you could also press Z and go into wireframe view now with these duplicates selected place your pointer over the Z over the Z axis which is the blue line and press E and drag these up now if it's not locking them on the Z axis just press Z and drag these up so they're in the middle 
of the top bar. Press 3 on your numbers pad. And we're going to drag these out on the Y axis here. So press S followed by Y. And drag these out so that they're in the middle of the frame. So I'll just sort of show you by zooming in a bit. So you want them to be, it doesn't, not 100%, but good enough for this simple tutorial. Okay. Press A to select everything, and then P to bring up the separate option, and select by loose parts. Press tab on your keyboard, then left click on one of the lines, hold down shift, and left click on the second one. Control J to join these, and come up to object mode, and next to convert, convert to curve. Press one on your numbers pad if you want, and then select the curve button. And again, in the geometry box, make sure round is selected. You can take this up to, I wouldn't go too mad, say, I don't know, 0 0.02, and you could take the resolution up, though be honest with you, on something this small, I wouldn't bother. And again, back to object, convert to, and then take this back to mesh. With this selected, just hold down shift and select the sphere. And then again, control J to join both of them. Now the first thing you'll notice is that the origin is in the middle of the sphere. So if I wanted to rotate this right now, this would happen. I'm just going to right click to change everything. So I need to make the origin at the top. The easiest way to do this is just with this selected still, hold down or hit shift to go into edit mode and then draw a box over the top. And you'll only have a series of vertices at the top here, but in wireframe mode, you will have also selected this one here. So you've got them both selected. So doesn't matter whether you do this in right hand view or front view. If you hold down shift followed by S and then select cursor to selected. Now press tab to go back into object mode, then select object, and then set origin to 3D cursor. And now if I rotate this, it will rotate here. Right click to go back. Now I'm going to go into, in fact I'm going to press Z and go into Material Preview. Okay, right click and press Smooth. So I'm going to create just um, a very simple, because I'm not going to go, I'm not going to do this in, um, I'm only going to render this in Preview because it gets complicated to try and get the um, Chrome looking right otherwise. So I said this is aimed at beginners. So what I want to do here is with this selected, come down to the little world, materials properties, and select new. Right click in the, um, sorry, left click in the base color and just drag this all the way up so it's pure white. And then in the metallic box, drag this all the way up. So you get a sort of a, a rough, sort of shiny ball. And then in the roughness, drag this all the way back. And you should get something that looks a bit chrome-like. Select the top bar. And next to new, there's a world which you can select. And then if you select material zero one, it will place the chrome effect on this sort of these bars here. 
Finally, I'm going to select the base that we created and I'm going to select new, left click on the base color and I'm just going to drag this down so it's black and I'm not going to do any more than that. You won't get a shadow cast on this, um, like I said I've aimed this at beginners so this is just a basic sort of um, tutorial. So I'm going to press 1 on my numbers pad. I'm going to select the first ball that we've created. Now, some people would do this by creating an array, but the problem with creating an array, which would duplicate these, the origin will still stay here, so it won't work, and you'd have to separate them. So for this tutorial, with this selected, get used to the G, uh, sorry, the um, the X axis because you won't be able to see the arrow if you want to get these quite close together. So I'm going to use shift on my middle mouse to sort of zoom in so I get quite a good view with this. Now with this selected, hit shift followed by D and then hit return. Now if you press G followed by X, you can grab this along, just grab it along so it's just touching the first ball. Hit Shift D, hit Return, then G followed by X. And do the same the other side. Shift D, hit Return, G, X. Grab this one over here. Finally, Shift D, hit Return, G, X. Grab this one over here. Okay. Now I'm not going to go into physics, you can use physics to make this work but it's a lot of effort and for a short um, video, animated video, it just isn't worth the effort. It takes a little bit of time but if I was to select say this ball here and then press N on my keyboard, now I've got this up showing so I need to select item and that's what you'll see. I'm going to be rotating this in the Y, on the Y axis. So at present, this is fine, it's at zero. There's a little button here which says Auto Keying. Select this. Now the one thing Blender doesn't know, unless I make some changes, it doesn't need know that you want a keyframe. So at present, this is fine, but I'll just show you something as we go through. So at this point, I'm happy where this um, this angle is. So if you place your pointer, say, just by number 10 on the, um, or 10 on the timeline, left click, just check your 10 here. You can change it by using the arrows because we're going to go up in 10s. Come up to the rotation and decide on an angle. So I'm going to select, by left clicking, I'm going to type in minus 65. I'm going to hit return. I'm going to come along to 20. Again, just check here. And in the Y, I'm going to left click and type 0. So that's the first sort of swing backwards and forwards. I'm going to select this one here on the left, but I need to make sure there's a keyframe here because otherwise if I go to this point, anyway I won't go into it, you'll need a keyframe here and the only way you can do that is press I on your keyboard and then select rotation. If I come to 3-0, okay, make sure it's 30 here. And in this case, in the Y box, I'm going to type 65. Then 40. Again, check your number here. And I'm going to select 0. I need to now select this one. And again, I need to press I and select rotation. So I force the keyframe. 
I'm going to come along 50. And then type minus 65. Now I'm just going to go right back to the beginning and make sure this is all working. And it's not. For some reason or other, something's gone wrong here. But that's not a problem. I'm going to just go back to this one here. For some reason or other, it should have worked. I don't know what went wrong. So I'm going to just press I and rotate. I'll just come along to 10 and type in minus 65. Like I said, I was winging this one. Then I'm going to come to 20 and type in 0. Let's have a look now, see if it's working. Yeah, OK. So I'm going to use this jump to keyframe. So it'll take me to the first the last keyframe select 60 and again I'm going to type in 0 I just do one more here so I'm going to select this one hit I rotation and then 70 65 then to 80 and then 0 and again, I'll have to place a manual keyframe here by hitting I and rotate. So I'm going to just go all the way along to this and I'll come back when um, I've finished. Hopefully that's enough for you to sort of work with. OK, well, I've gone all the way along the end to um, the 250 frames. So if everything's gone right, what you should have is something that is if you press the play button operating like this okay it's not a hundred percent perfect you could have you can reduce the angle as it goes through but like I said this is pretty much aimed at beginners so that will do for this okay I'm going to close this down by hitting N on my keyboard sort of center up your view if you want and then if you hold down your middle mouse you can sort of get yourself a view that you think might look quite good you can roll your middle mouse as well so we're gonna go with I don't know this view here and if you hold down control followed by alt and then zero you'll get your camera view and again hit N and then next to view well select view and then place a tick next to camera to view if you roll your middle mouse you can sort of change your view if you want a, a better sort of um, zoom in and out if you hold down control followed by your middle mouse and then move your mouse you can get a more proportional sort of view hold your middle mouse button down you can sort of change the angle and then if you Anyway, you get this little picture. You can also select the camera and move it. So I want to move this. Yeah, shift in your middle mouse to sort of move your view. Sometimes I find it doesn't always work. So let's get this looking a bit better. I don't know. Let's go with this view here. I'm going to press N to close this down. So the first thing, I'm going to render it in view. So I'm going to just select the show gizmo box. So this isn't highlighted and then show overlays. And this will literally get rid of everything. Oh, by the way, if you leave it, leave your camera locked to view, if any movements, you will change. So I can just press N and, and select it. OK, so here we go. So this is the view that I'm going to render come up to output properties and I'm not going to change anything much here I can just keep this very simple but what you will need to do is in the output box next to TMP select the little folder and decide where you're going to save your video so for ease I'm going to save it on my desktop 
give it a title so I don't know call it something quick I'll call it new turn and then select accept left click on file format PNG and then just select FF MPEG video I'm not going to change the output or the types I'm just going to leave it as FF FF MPEG video now to render the view what you need to do is actually select view and then come down and select viewport render animation select this now you'll see a little timer so you'll have to wait till this says 250 I'll come back to this when it's finished rendering once your animation is finished you can close this box down and then hopefully you should have a video albeit very simple of an animated Newton's Cradle hopefully that's helped someone thank you for watching cheers